Moving to our next principle, um, government can sometimes improve market outcomes. Guys, remember, in the previous principles uh, or principle um, that um, markets are a good way to organize economic activity, we talk about uh, market economy and centralized economy, and we said market economy is actually better because um, once again, the decision making of um, um, firms and buyers can actually determine a better outcome on the market. And I was saying that, well, here you go, government actually have to stay away from the economy and doesn't interfere. But sometimes, sometimes when um, market on its own fail to allocate resources efficiently, then government can actually um, in intervene or uh, interfere in the economy and improve market outcomes. So in what situation it's actually possible? So government can enforce property rights. So remember, um, property rights, this is when you actually, um, I guess, claim the ownership of some kind of property or contract. Um, and if government didn't uh, regulate these property rights with the set of laws, with the uh, policemen that we have in our society, with the court system that we have our, in our society, then economic activity probably most likely will fail. Okay, for example, let's suppose, um, let's suppose we're going to take, so if you, for example, own your house, okay, so you own your house, you know that you live in the house and nobody is going actually to come to your house, knock on the door and kick you out. Because once again, based on the laws here in the United States, that person who is going to do that, okay, if they're going to try to kick you out of the house, that person is going to be prosecuted. Okay, so once again, we have court system, we have courts, uh, we have police, okay, we have laws, okay, that are actually implemented. Okay, and um, government using these courts, police, and laws, they guarantee property rights. Believe it or not, in some countries, it's actually possible. In some countries, somebody can knock on the door, kick you out, and saying, you know what, we're actually going to take over, and this is ours. You know, probably it's not the best example with the houses, but it happens with businesses all the time. Um, I had friends um, who are actually from Syria, and they told me that um, they actually, you know, there were cases where um, somebody in the country opened up a business, and that business is actually going to do really, really well. Uh, then government it's actually knocks on the door, they, you know, uh, take over the business and they run some kind of their own, you know, like cousin or some kind of relative and they're saying you're running the business and they're getting all the money. So once again, this property rights in the United States, we probably, um, you know, taken for granted, but in some countries, it's actually, um, you know, these property rights are not enforced and therefore the economic well-being of those countries and citizens in, the, in those countries are actually going to be much, much lower. Um, another example I can tell you, or I want to tell you about um, enforcing the property rights. Once again, remember, when government enforcing these property rights, okay, this is when government can interfere in the economy. Okay, once again, they they create courts, they, they actually have police, and we have set of laws that police is actually enforcing and, and courts enforcing, and this make um, our citizens actually better off. So another example I can um, tell you, so... Um, I am originally, actually, I'm going to give you an extra credit right now. I'm originally from the Republic of Belarus. Once again, Belarus is the, is the former Soviet Union Republic. Okay, and um, so we are a separate country right now after the Soviet Union separated, but still the economy is doing actually, you know, okay. And if you're following all the news, we actually have like... Um, demonstrations right now and strikes against our president and stuff like that so anyway if you're listening to this video whoever first th first three people who listen into this video and um you can actually use remind 101 and text me miss bowen you are from belarus okay so you need to text me what country i'm from i'm from you're going to get some extra points on the first exam okay so um therefore example about the property rights so in belarus uh, you know, the first McDonald's was actually opened many, many years ago, like probably in 1996, you know, but that was the very first McDonald's in the capital of Minsk that was opened. And, you know, people actually thought that it was like, you know, the best, um, you know, actually, I don't know, restaurants or facility ever. So the second location was opened, you know, shortly after that. And um, in order to open that location, McDonald's, you know, the corporation, they actually signed 
agreement, okay, agreement with the government of Belarus for a lease of land. And McDonald's Corporation, you know, they actually um, got a piece of land and they they were going to lease that from the government of Belarus um, during 100 years. Okay, so here we go. We're paying you money each year. You know, this land is ours and we actually, you know, actually running this business here. So um, they did that uh, three or four years later, the government of Belarus, they actually knock on the door of that McDonald's corporation and they said, you know what, get out from here. We don't want you here anymore. We want to use this building and this piece of land for something else. So this is an example where property rights are not enforced. Okay, just think about when the other companies that are actually looking at that example, you know, let's suppose we're going to take Pizza Hut or I don't know, Burger King, they, they see what is going on in the country when the property rights are not enforced. Do you think they want to go to Belarus and open up a business there? And the answer is going to be actually no. Okay, so are people of Belarus worse off when McDonald's Corporation actually closed in that location in the end says yes, because all of a sudden we lost some jobs, all of a sudden we lost the convenience for the buyers to come and, you know, enjoy a, well, I'm going to tell it, unhealthy burger. Um, and of course, we lost some kind of taxes that are going to go to the government. So therefore, once again, governments can sometimes, you know, in, intervent in the market and they can improve market outcome. Okay, the next example is going to be market failure. So um, market failure, so once again, this is where um, um, society on its own fail to allocate resources efficiently. So once again, market failure, you need to know this definition for the test. Um, this is where um, society on its own um, fail to allocate resources efficiently and therefore government have to interfere and fix it. So the example of this market failure is going to be pollution. So pollution, okay, this is example of externality, okay, this is where, um, um, so externality, once again, this is going to be when the action of a person positively or negatively is going to affect a bystander, okay? For example, let's suppose, just, just imagine the neighborhood where you live in right now, and let's suppose some kind of big uh, paper mill plant is going to come next to your neighborhood uh, and start producing actually paper. You as a bystander, okay, once again, you did not participate in the decision to open up a paper mill plant next to your neighborhood, okay, but you as a bystander, you're going to be negatively affected by this action. Why? Because paper mill plant produce a lot of pollution and actually very, very bad smell. So you as a citizen in your neighborhood, you're actually going to, you know, inhale this polluted air and you're going to have this, you know, smell um, in your neighborhood or all the time. So once again, if government actually doesn't interfere, if government doesn't interfere, then this is going to be failure to allocate resources efficiently. Once again, paper mill plant, they don't mean anything bad, but they just found this piece of land and they decided to actually build a plant here. Okay. In order to avoid this negative externality in the society, government is going to interfere and they're going to say, no, 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 you know what? Paper mill plant have to be, for example, built 10 miles outside of the city because it's produced pollution and it's produced this, you know, um, not really good, good smell air. So once again, in this situation, government can interfere and say, you know what? No, we're going to have um, certain guidelines, certain rules, and paper mill plant cannot be built next to a neighborhood. Okay. So and um, so another example is going to be market power. So you guys can actually, you know, can um, you know read on your own about that but this is going to be you know the example of monopoly remember monopoly um this is the situation when we have um you know a single producer or supplier of a certain good um you know on the market for example here in greenville we do um, still have monopoly you know monopoly is not really a popular form of uh, companies anymore on the markets but here in greenville uh, the example of mono monopoly is going to be greenville utilities company so once again, if the Green Mill Utility Company was not um, regulated heavily by the government, what would happen with the power bill that you receive each month? That power bill would be much, much higher, isn't it? Because Green Mill Utilities is the only supplier of electricity to our homes in the city of Greenville. Okay, so in this situation, once again, government interfere in the market and they actually regulate 
um, Green Mill Utility Company. Um, I think it's like that. And they say, no, 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 you cannot charge actually high prices for each whatever cubic of electricity to our um, uh, to our citizens. So once again, the company Greenville Utilities have too much of a market power. Okay, then government can interfere and actually do something about that. Okay, keep going. Um, government promotes quality. We're going to skip that. Um, so next one, I'm going to go through these two principles or three principles really quick. So standards of living um, depends on its ability to produce goods and services. So once again. Um, we have different standards of living among different countries. Why the standards of living are actually different? And the answer is going to be productivity. So productivity, this is how many goods we actually produce for, um, from each unit of labor. The more goods we produce per hour, per month, or per year, the better off that country is going to be. The higher, the product, the higher productivity we have, and therefore, the better off that country is going to be. Um, so therefore, country is going to have higher standards of living. And if country produce actually less goods and services per hour, per month, or per week, or per year, then standards of living in that country is going to be lower. So make sure you know definition for the exam. What is the productivity? Once again, this is how many goods we produce per um, unit of um, labor. Um, guys, in next course of macroeconomics, we actually talk about productivity a lot. Productivity uh, depends on um, you know physical capital that you have on um, education that actually or you know education of human capital that people acquire technological knowledge and stuff like that so but this is more um, you know macroeconomic um, a kind of discussion but you do need to know the definition of productivity and that productivity determines standards of living in the country um, the next one what we need to know is what is inflation so remember inflation this is the overall increase in the level of prices in our economy Okay, so usually when we experience an inflation in the economy, once again, what does it mean? It means that the prices are increasing. What is causing inflation? Inflation is actually caused primarily by government printing too much money. Okay, so when the government is going to turn on their printing facility and print too much money, then we're going to experience an inflation in our economy. And the next one is that society actually facing a short run uh, trade off between inflation and unemployment. And pretty much this is what it says. Um, you know, if we experience an inflation in our economy, okay, remember inflation, it means that we actually have higher prices in the economy. Okay. If inflation is higher, then unemployment rate, believe it or not, is actually going to decrease. So from one point of view, we want to have lower level of unemployment in our country, isn't it? So yes, unemployment is decreasing. Okay, but what do we have is over here? Or what do we have over here? Our inflation rate is actually going to be higher or higher level of prices in the economy is going to occur. Okay, or actually when inflation is increasing then unemployment is actually going to be lower okay and vice versa and once again guys what is the reason behind that um you know we'll talk about that in macroeconomics and vice versa remember if inflation is actually lower okay so the level of prices in the economy is decreasing do you know what is actually happening in our society um then our unemployment rate u slash e its unemployment is actually going to increase okay so once again really quick the reason behind that is for example if the inflation rate is increasing it means high we're charging higher prices um companies they actually get more money okay for selling goods and services when they're getting more money for selling um goods goods and services at a higher price it means that they can hire more people isn't it so now i can actually i have more money if i have more money um on my bank bank account as a company then i can hire more people and therefore unemployment rate is decreasing and vice versa if the company is receiving less money for each goods and services that they're selling they're receiving less money what are they going to do they are actually going to hire less people so this is a kind of you know <clears throat> very broad theory um you know between this uh, trade-off of inflation and unemployment so i'm going to finish this chapter at this note um guys i know you all rock you can crush this course you can crush economics this is your first chapter and we're going to continue with our uh, next chapter.